Let's uh, say good morning to Pat Murphy. He is the president of the Berkeley County Board of Education. Pat, good morning to you, sir. Good morning to all three of you. Great to have you with us. I know you do extensive preparation for these appearances. Usually to no, to not. <laughs> <laughs> to no avail. Sir. That's the way it should be. We do just the opposite, Pat. We anticipate what you may be thinking, so we try to do just the opposite. <laughs> okay, well, you're doing a great job. You were one of the two no votes in the yes, situation sir. with the decision to extend the superintendent or not. Ron Stevens has been extended by a three to two vote. You and Melissa Power voted against. We've had Melissa on to get her thoughts on why she voted against. Yours, Pat. Well, I, uh, I wanted to send a message that I believe that we need to uh, improve our students' performance. Uh, I've supported, along with Melissa, another candidate, Dr. Uh, Duncan. Uh, superintendent out of Roan County, and uh, what county? Roan. Roan. Okay, sorry, yeah, I didn't hear you. Down. Uh, I'm trying to think of the town there, Spencer. Mm -hmm. Spencer. And uh, what what caught my attention um, uh, was that he came in and he told us he said he he told us how we had slipped in our math scores and our language scores over the last. Uh, seven years we had gone in math from 25th in the state down to 45th and uh, uh, language arts uh, 12th uh, down to 31st is this and a county by county ranking yeah county by county ranking so and when you stop and think about west virginia's national ranking that he uh, contributes so i uh, i liked his uh, aggressiveness uh, uh, being on the offensive with us. He didn't come in and tell us what we wanted to hear. He came in and told us um, where we were lacking and where we needed to address things. And uh, he had an engineering background, by the way, uh, mm -hmm. which was held against him, I think, in some ways. But uh, I liked his analytical uh, approach to things. But uh, so I was voting for someone originally. And then after, uh, f first I want to say, this board, I enjoy working with. I'm, not, I'm very positive about how we get out into the schools, how we uh, uh, work together respectfully. When we began this whole process, we were in it for 20 weeks. And uh, uh, we were, uh, we, were uh, we didn't holler, shout at each other, or anything like that. Uh, it was tense. Uh, we were unapologetic as far as how we advocated, but we were respectful. And I, uh, um, I, I like I, I like the people I'm serving with, uh, even though, you know, that's democracy. I lost three to two. So, uh, so the vote was more for another candidate than it was necessarily against oh, Ron yeah, no, Stevens. It, no, it wasn't. Uh, I uh, initially I wanted to see the other person win. And I was in a minority. Uh, but out of respect to the other uh, three uh, board members, uh, the employees have had four superintendents in the last five years. Uh, Manny, Arvine. Uh, Patrick Murphy. Chuck Catfield. It was an interim. Uh, Patrick Murphy and now Ron. And so the employees said, can you all give us a break? Uh, can we have some continuity? Uh, that sort of thing. I, I didn't agree with that. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to get the best person in that I thought would have helped us academically. Uh, that's our main focus, I believe, in education. And I, but I lost. And I and I, uh, I and Melissa Power made a good comment one evening in the executive session. She said, "No matter which of the candidates we select, once we select them, we want that person to be a success. And I want Mr. Stevens to be a success." I wholeheartedly believe that's it. I'm not going to be sitting there being a, a, an obstructionist or taking a, uh, pot shots from the sidelines mm -hmm. trying to uh, downplay. I want to see the man be a success. And uh, if he thrives, he's going to survive. But uh, Tell me about the one-year contract decision. Well, the one-year contract, uh, actually, uh, uh, I, I was president of the State School Board Association uh, during the COVID crisis, and um, but I, I developed a lot of friends from around the state, and one of the points that that was made is that the shorter the contract, the shorter the leash, the more responsiveness you get from the administration, not just the superintendent, but all of his subordinates. 
I, I like that philosophy. If you're doing a good job, great. But if you give them a four-year contract, and I learned this with Dr. Murphy, it, the accountability seems to slip, and uh, or at least responsiveness to the school board uh, seems to slip. And I, uh, I, I just think that uh, the shorter the contract, you're you're performing, you're moving along. But if you get out there, then the school board, uh, in my opinion, becomes like the Pontiac Indian on the hood of the car. Mr. Stubblefield. That's interesting, Pat, uh, about the, uh, uh, the, the leash, the length of the leash. Uh, I, too, had questions about the one-year contract. Uh, mm-hmm. And we started off by asking Melissa this, uh, this question. And the question was, are you expecting the superintendent to keep the trains on schedule or to address s- several of the pressing problems that we have? And we have a lot of problems in the right. schools, right. and some of limited to, uh, that school, uh, superintendent has uh, can correct, others outside the purview, but the ones that can correct. Uh, I'm not convinced with one year with a very short leash that we can expect a superintendent to do both, to do keep the uh, the trains on schedule, which mm-hmm. need to do, and to meaningfully address some of these other problems. Uh, and you say that a short leash is, is necessary, uh, but it can be counterproductive as well, especially when we look at the school board, all well-serving individuals, uh, Board of Education, all well-serving, very, very capable, very skilled person. You only have one, one of the school, uh, Board of Education members that has a background in education, and that's Jackie Long. Uh, you have, you've taught some, but you've been in many other things over the years. Uh, do you have the, you feel you have the expertise to, to keep this leash very tight without giving the superintendent more latitude to both keep the trains on schedule and to address the present needs? Well, first off, Ed, I'll disagree with you. Okay, okay, yeah. that, that's the way it should be. And not in a defensive manner. Yeah, no, no, but, that's, but, that's but what it should I, be, yeah. I, I have a, an entire uh, career okay. behind education. I've also served uh, in the legislature on the education committee, yes. so I saw that. I've worked, um, uh, well, that those two things, I okay. think, to give, give you an idea. I've been in the classroom. Um, now, let me go back to your other question. My, my, main, my main point, uh, yeah. one-year leash. Okay. Yeah, I, you can initiate programs. And, and be in the midst of doing a good job, and it'll become evident. Whereas if you're sitting there saying, well, I'll do this in the first year, second year, third year, then if the legislature is spotting concerns, you don't have to have that, uh, you don't have that threat that your job's going to be terminated. Uh, I, 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 th- I like the idea that the school board is elected by the community and that the superintendent is their only employee. And if you're going to have a superintendent who's out there for four years, he can forget about what you're do- worried about. He's got a four-year cushion to do do his own thing. And I just think that the school board should keep the superintendent accountable for what the community expects out of the school system. And I think the best way to do that is to keep him on a short leash. Now, I'm not speaking for the other four here. But, it, but as I've watched this, there are other counties. Kanawha County, I believe, has a one-year contract for their superintendent. And I've talked to Mr. Crawford, who's a member of that board, very active in the SSAC and other things. But, and he's told, he said, you know, this is the way things are more sensitive to what the community is wanting via their representatives. I don't have any uh, uh, antagonism towards uh, Mr. Stevens. Uh, if if you asked me, and I, I prepared one of my yeah. things I prepared, if you had asked me, you know, well, why did you vote against him? I wouldn't go through a litany of reasons yeah. because I believe that you praise a person in public and you criticize them in private. And that, and we've had those conversations, uh, very candid between the, the gentleman and myself. But you have to, I think the best way that for leverage for your community school board to be in touch with what the community wants, not my private agenda, but what the community expects out of it, I think you need to keep a short leash on the thing. If he's got good programs going at the end of this year, he'll, 
he'll uh, he'll be renewed in that. But if but if problems are not being addressed or or uh, issues are not are not coming forward, the it, it shouldn't just be that the board members every two year, uh, every four years each board member is elected, but every two years we're electing either two or three. It shouldn't be via the election. It should be continually during the year between those five board members and the superintendent, they're only employed. John Gilstrap. It seems that there's there's unanimity among the board members that among the, the big problems is teacher uh, recruitment and retention. Mm -hmm. Now, we've talked about your locality pay, that sort of thing is beyond the, the board's purview. But the other common drumbeat that we hear, particularly from teachers, is that there's sort of a Punishing is probably the wrong word, but a, a burden, an administrative burden um, that is outside the actual teaching of students and that there's an ongoing disciplinary problem. In fact, I believe it was Damon Wright who used the disciplinary accountability. I, I might have that wrong. It was either he or Jackie. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was the phrase, disciplinary accountability. Uh, what do you look for in the coming year, if either from the board or from um, Ron Stevens or whomever? to fix those problems? Well, first off, and uh, discipline by code is solely res uh, responsibility of the school board. Uh, and the school board has taken the, uh, aggressive steps here in the last couple of uh, Well, meetings. define the problem a little bit. Well, it comes down to we have weak school leaders in, in very few schools, the principals. I've, I've seen that uh, less than two or three schools, I think, but, but we have weak leaders there. Um, we've, had, uh, we've had so many problems that sometimes our central office administration it hasn't been aware of that. Um, the hacking, uh, selling the school bonds, some of those concerns. So we have to make sure that we're uh, paying attention to that. But this school board just recently uh, uh, passed the uh, allocations for three uh, school resource officers. Uh, we've, uh, we've, uh, the administration, uh, Mr. Stevens informed us that they're going to be putting in uh, wands to check students for weapons in our schools. Um, the school board just appointed, we have to add two more members, but just appointed um, a discipline committee from the community. Uh, a lot of administrators are on that good administrators what do you mean by that pat the discipline committee we're going to review the policy we have and the practices that are going on or the lack thereof and try to uh, tr turn that direction around like the school board's responsible for so you'll be looking at the policies as opposed to individual cases oh yes the yeah, yeah you, okay. you you don't want to write a policy for an individual student yeah. behavior yeah. problem but but uh, we've had some major uh, uh, problems we we had a school at the last board meeting, they lost 10, 10 of their employees, uh, eight transfers and two resignations, plus there's been others. That, that's a retention problem there. You're sitting there, you have a lot of money invested in training the people. Um, Does that trace back to the leadership? Is that why they left? I, I think so in some of the schools, yes, without a doubt. So why are those leaders still in that's, leadership positions? That's why we're challenging the superintendent to get on the stick. I see. So, is that candid in that? Yeah, well, yeah. That's candid. Yeah. It's very candid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, we have a lot of problems. Uh, the uh, We've mentioned several. The retention of teachers, retention of staff, the uh, school security, the hacking problem. Uh, a lot of this falls under the... Uh, under the purview of the superintendent and you as Board of Education kind of oversee and look at the results. How much on hand support do you provide to the superintendent to address these various problems? Not not overseeing, not no. not looking in judgment, but actually working with hand in hand. Well, we, we uh, if, if a school board member, and we're told not to do this, I, I'm gonna tell you right now, uh, by council and everyone else, but but if a uh, board member of, gets wind that there's a problem at a school, we'll walk in. We don't go in and tell the. We do not go in and tell anyone what to do. From a student, if I see a student misbehaving, or the principal, you do not walk in. You just go in to observe. 
But I know in one case, one of the board members said, hey, there's, there's major problems at this school. So one of the other board members went at a different times because we had to be uh, conscious of uh, quorums. Uh, you can't have three people or even sometimes two. And so we go in and just observe. And then we go to the superintendent and say, it, just say, you know, in the executive session, um, we were at this particular school and we saw this and what are you going to do about it? And it, and it goes from there. And, and I've, he's been responsive to that. Now, you do have to go through a procedure, uh, due process. Because if you just go out and say to somebody, you're fired, and it's not a will and pleasure thing, you're going to have to eat a lot of money in legal fees, and you're going to have to hire them back. So you haven't solved the problem yet. So you have to go through a period of improvement, just like with any employee. Very few of our employees are a will and pleasure. Uh, assistants superintendents, deputy superintendents, there's about six, five or six people in that category. But, and they're at the will and pleasure of the superintendent, not the board. The, the, the superintendent's the only one that has the, that status with us. Are there expectations on the curriculum in the coming, in, in, in the near future? I don't know if there are curriculum issues here in Berkeley County or not. Well, there are performance issues. Right. And that, that, that's curriculum. Uh, what, I, I've over the years I, I was in the classroom. We we, uh, we adopt new textbooks every five or six years, and I can remember in, uh, when I taught spelling, and I was a horrible speller myself. I'll, I'll admit it. But we had a, a, a spelling series called Riverside, and it used a systematic approach to teaching spelling, just like you do math and everything. It was progressive. It it taught the students patterns and everything. And they got rid of it. I, I, I hung on to my books, and I, I just threw the others aside, the new ones they bought, and used the ones which worked. And uh, sometimes I think uh, uh, unless you buy an updated version of the same book, we, we should stick to what works. And uh, that's, that's an interesting question. Who actually makes the decision of this? Is this at the state level, the legislators, the board of uh, the school uh, school board of board, or the local uh, board of education? The local employees are okay. brought in as advisors, and they go through the materials and uh, and, and make the recommendation. The superintendent then uh, recommends what they recommended, but we begin at the grassroots. So sometimes I think that we're... Uh, but the final decision rests within the local board of education. Right. But okay. we, but we uh, unless we walk down off the stage and look at the books that are there, yeah. very seldom do we even see what's there. Sure. And nor should we actually make the, the decision as far as which one is recommended. The practitioners should do it, but I, I worry about sometimes they're under the influence of the uh, salesman of the textbook company. Mm -hmm. There was a point when my son was learning how to spell in, what is it, third, fourth, fifth grade, whenever that is. Mm -hmm. You know, words are kind of important to me. And the drumbeat in Prince William County, Virginia, which is where he was going to school, they didn't believe in correct spelling. They believed in creative spelling. That was what they called it, creative spelling. So they didn't want actually spelling the word to get in the way of the creative mm -hmm. process. I thought my head was going to explode. Yeah. I, I, it was just, you know, what, what were they thinking? We're yeah. not talking about Prince William County, but just it's it's about how the the uh, textbooks change and the strategies change. And um, well, it's it's the the flavor of the day. Yeah, and uh, you're you're right. Uh, open space schools was the big selling point yeah. uh, back in the '70s, and uh, we just finally. Uh, in the last couple of years, put the last door on the last open space classroom. <laughs> yeah, Pat, what do you need to see over the next 12 months or less than that to convince you to uh, extend Ron Stevens again or to stop it at the one year and move on? Oh, that's a good question. I didn't anticipate I'm, I'm known to ask one of those a week. <laughs> I, I, I lose sleep over these kind of questions. <laughs> Okay, repeat it so I'm, I don't make a mistake. <laughs> sure, for $200, what is, uh, so what, what do you need to see from Ron Stevens to know that it's the right decision to extend him again a year from now, or it's the right decision to look somewhere else? I'm going to be open and not have preconceived uh, points. I want to see what he brings forth. And um, uh, I'm not going to say, well, if we have 
I, I'm just not going to put benchmarks out there. I want to see his attention on academics and his team on academics. And I, I, want, to, I want candor. That, those are the kind of In regards to what? Well, for example, I pointed out one of the candidates came in and told us something I had never heard. You slipped from 25 to 10, to 10th, or, yeah. or 10th from t- to 25th. You know, you decreased. And, and that, uh, that accountability was not being shared with the, the board up to that point. Yeah. But you said no benchmarks. Well, I, 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 don't, I, I want to see improvement in our children. We have students who, who attended, who, they attended, excuse me, <laughs> uh, attended school 40% of the year. 40%. They, they were there for 73 days out of 180. Did and, we move them up to the next grade? And they were promoted. They were promoted. That one was promoted. We had one who was there in the sixth grade, 22 days, 12% of the year, and he was promoted. Now, how are you establishing a work ethic? How are you establishing any competency of the material? Unless he's a genius and just came to school and took the test. How are you doing it? I want to see accountability on the part of our students. We're having discipline problems in our schools where I feel that some schools, it's not safe for the children in that school. And the kids aren't being held accountable. How are we promoting, assuming that this is not a medical situation where the kid had some in-home and instruction? These were not. These okay. were not. How are we promoting these children to the next grade if they've been in school 22 days out of an entire school year? And, well, it's, and it's not medical. Well, sadly, we as professionals in the school system are not doing our job. And it, we're... And it's taking acts of the legislature to start forcing the uh, uh, giving the teachers the ability to retain the students, or uh, to, they just passed this law the past time that says they're going to put aides in the first year in the first grade. But by the third grade, if they're not performing, and I haven't read the law in, in detail because I'm worried about a loophole in there, but they're going to say if the child's not ready to move on to, from the third grade on, he should be um, he should he he should be retained. Mm-hmm. Uh, I one one year I it never came about, but I put into the law when I was back in the legislature that well, let's promote kids by the semester. At, in January, you know who's behind. Why wait to June to put them back to September's work? Why don't we just put them back to September's work in January? Why let them be frustrated, disrupting the class, aggravating everybody around them, and, and waiting to be retained to go back to where they should start over again? And maturation is a big issue in children's lives, and we don't. And and we have this one year. Everybody moves forward, so so now, the and I get into it with the administration, not. Not Mr. Stevens, but some of his subordinates. And they'll say, research shows that if you retain a child, he will not graduate from high school. So what are we doing? We're passing out diplomas like candy bars, and and the kids are not anywhere near the 12th grade level. Now, I know there are uh, children with special needs that go or progress and stuff. And, I, you know, they're in workshops and, and things, and thank God they're – in our schools and not in institutions they're in a more positive environment but the vast majority of our students should be doing higher work than the 30 or 30 some percent 40 percent who are showing mastery Pat, if i ask the teacher how the kid with 22 days of school in a year got promoted the teacher is going to say well the principal made me. And if I ask the principal, the principal's going to say, above me, they're putting pressure on me. And if I ask that level, they're going to go with the state level, they're putting pressure on me. Well, the, well the, who, who, where does the buck stop the buck at stop, the local school level? Let's start, let's turn around and say, where did the buck, uh, where did this wheel start rolling? It started in Washington, D.C., when, and, and it was a bipartisan problem here, because both, uh, I think, Bush and Obama were presidents of the State Party. They got hung up on graduation rates, so we're high, we have high graduation rates. It's just uh, <laughs> it's a paper tiger. What, what are those people walking across the stage capable of doing? Yeah, and uh, you know what does the uh, we, so now we have uh, employers having to educate the uh, 
their employees because they have a diploma which got them in the door, but they don't know what to do on the floor. Pat, we are just about out of time. I want to thank you for coming in. And didn't that go fast? It was painful. For <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was that painful. <laughs> I'm going to get a softer chair next time. 